Okay class, for this video I'm going to do the MUMS queries. So this is chapter 2, queries for MUMS database, and this is chapter 1 finished, the MUMS landscaping. Um, and the first query is about the supervisor table. So I have the supervisor table selected here, but it doesn't really matter. When I go to create the query, and I'm gonna do it in design view. We're doing all design view here. We're not using the wizard. We're being more powerful than this. So I'm gonna add the supervisor and then close it. I don't want both tables open if I'm not using them. It can mess up your query. So I'm gonna drag this down. I'll drag this window up for you a little. And uh, query number one, it, or number A says find all the supervisors who started prior to January 1, 2013. And they want a first name, a last name, um, an hourly rate, and the start date. And so the start date for this, the criteria is a date. So it tells us, um, well, it started before January 1st. So I'm gonna say less than January 1, 2013. Now, I'm gonna run this and see if it worked. Okay, good. So there is one person. Now we only have three supervisors, so our query should not have that much information. So here it is. So I can save this query, um, but let me go back to design view first. So when I come back to design view, the query automatically formatted the date in a different format, that's fine. And it put these um, hashtags around it. And again, that's fine. That's what the computer needs. I don't have to do it. Remember, the more you type, the more you typo. So if you can keep it simple and let the program do what it needs to do, you'll be better off. But when you save this, um, it will save all of that. And we're gonna call this um, query A because that's what the book has. So I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna close it because our next query has to deal with the um, uh, the customer table. So then I'm going to go customer table, add, and close this. I'll eventually maybe use both tables, but not right now. So find the customer's um, name and address that live on Cantor. So I'm going to say customer name and the address. Now I can't just put Cantor because there's no customer that lives on Cantor. You don't live on a street, you live in a house or a building on a street. So I have to get rid of the, um, it's putting um, quotes around it because it's text, and I have to put an asterisk because it could, well, some number Cantor, and I don't know if it's Cantor Street, Avenue, Boulevard, so I'm gonna put an asterisk after also. So now I'm gonna run it, and we have two, um, customers that live on Cantor Avenue. So I'm going to save this as query B. Query B. Did I use a capital letter the last time? I don't remember. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't think I did. Query A. No, I didn't. Okay. I, I try to keep my naming conventions um, organized, but okay. Now I know. Lowercase. Um, now I'm going to go back to design view. And now I can just change this query to a new query and then resave it, uh, do a save as, and save it as query C. So that's what I'm gonna do. Find the customer number and name. So I'm gonna clear this one. And I do it like, I wait until the little cursor becomes a black arrow, and then I select those fields and just hit delete on my keyboard and it clears it. Or I can just change them right here. So that said customer name. So I can just change it to customer number and a customer name. It's my habit to just double click up here. Um, amount paid and balance for all customers who have paid zero or whose balance is zero. So I need to have zero paid. Now I can't put zero balance because this means they have to have both an zero paid and a zero balance. And that book asks us for or a zero balance. So by using the or 
row, we're expanding our query and, and getting more customers. Let me just make sure, yes, or who's balanced. So when we run it, we have two people. This one meets the criteria because they paid zero. This one meets the criteria because they have a zero balance. They're a good customer, they pay their, pay their bills. So I'm gonna do a file save as, and I'm saving it as um, a database object, as an object, save, and it will ask me, and I'm gonna call it query C. Query C, okay. Um, go back to design view, and now we're gonna create a parameter query. You know, I love parameter queries. They're such a good idea. And, you know, we can use queries, and the reason they give you queries in Chapter 2 is because it's important to be able to ask the tables information, because on our database, all of our information is here in the tables. And once we have tables, then we can make queries, we can make forms, and we can make reports. But the other thing about a query is you can make a report or a form from a query. So, and I'm going to give you an example of a report. If I wanted a parameter query, um, and for example, I'm doing business in, in six different towns, and I want to know, maybe I need to hire a new driver to deliver my product to these six towns because my, my four drivers are too busy. So I can do a query and have only the city show up um, and then count how many customers or look how many customers I have in that city. Maybe I see that my drivers aren't, are unfairly, some of them are working more than the other. And I can do this query and create a report. And then when I click on the report, it'll open up and it'll say what city. And so it, I can uh, instantly have information about that city only. And then I can close it and open it up again and put another city in and get the, the um, information from that. So let's do a query, a parameter query. I call them a parameter prompt because it prompts you for information. Create a query for the customer table that, that enters, they have to enter a postal code. And uh, the user will see all the fields in the query. So I'm just gonna click them all. And then my postal code is going to be my prompt. So um, I'm going to put a bracket and then whatever you want your uh, user to see, that's what you enter. So I'm gonna say, please enter a postal code. Um, and if we have zip code, then you know we can use zip code. So then when I run it, it'll say, please enter a postal code. Actually, I don't know a postal code for any of my, any of my customers, so I'm in trouble. So I'm just gonna put in a, a Vancouver postal code. And I don't have any customers in that postal code, but let me see, what is a postal code? Uh, 19363. So let me uh, go back to design view and run it again. What did I say? 98363, did I, is that what I said? I can't remember, no. Okay, but you understand, I, I don't wanna waste time um, on this, but whatever the postal code is, and it shows all of the customer information. All right, let's save this. Uh, file save as database object, and this is query D. Query D. Okay, now I'm getting my nice little row of queries here. Let's go on to E, it's a cross-tab query. Okay, I'm gonna save that for in a minute. Um, and now we need to find the supervisor for each customer. Um, and we we're using the customer and the supervisor um, table, we're using both, because we need fields from both of them. So I'm gonna delete all of this, and I'm going to add my, uh, add my supervisor table here and it's gonna create that link between them. And let me show you what happens if you don't have that link. So first let's run it and find the right thing. So we need to find the supervisor for each customer. List the supervisor number and uh, first name and last name. It says last name, first name, but I'm gonna do first name, last name. The customer number and the customer name 
and the balance. And sort the results by customer number within supervisor number. So now my, I've put my supervisor information up there first. So it will sort by this first, but I will tell it to sort ascending, which means low to high. And then I'm gonna do descending in here. I could do ascending too, but I'll just do descending so um, you can see the difference. So I'm gonna run it. So here's all of the 26, then all of 29, then 32. And then it's gonna start, I said descending, so from Z to A. So here's W to A n to b and then t to c so it did it the right way but let me show you what happens and there's 15. so there's 15 customers each customer has a supervisor so that's what it's showing so let's go back and let me show you what happens when we don't have that now we have three supervisors and 15 customers so watch what happens so it doesn't understand that this customer is connected to this supervisor. So it puts this customer in each supervisor's uh, field or record. So now I have 45. And what is 45? 15 customers times three uh, supervisors. So it multiplies or it creates it because it doesn't understand that link. So if you need that link, you find your linking field and you just grab it and drag it. And it doesn't matter if you grab it and drag it um, this way or this way, it doesn't matter. So then it will be correct. All right, so I'm gonna save this, save as a database object, and this is query E. Query E. Okay, so now um, open the query you just did and restrict that uh, restrict it to only customers whose balance is greater than 500. So I'm going to go balance here and greater than 500. Now remember, don't put in your dollar sign, don't put in decimals, or in, well, you might need to put in decimals, but you don't need the dollar sign. The computer already understands that this balance column is a currency field because that's what we created in chapter one. So when I do that, sure enough, there's all the balances. Maybe I was supposed to sort it. Oh no, it did not, it did not ask me to sort it. So there it is, unsorted. I'm gonna save. Oops, oh, I just messed up. Okay, so I just saved this query as E and it's really F. So I messed up my E query. So uh, I'll have to do file, save as, a database object, save as, this is query F. And then I'm gonna have to go fix query E. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open query E in design view. And I'm gonna get rid of the 500 and run it again. Okay, so this is the, oh, but it's not sorted now. So I can't sort, well, while I'm here, I'll, and my mistake, let me just say, I can't sort it out here ascending. If I assort it ascending here, it does give me um, descending. So here's, why is it, oh, I'm by first name, that's why, ascending. So here's all my 26s, but it doesn't, oh, it did, look at, oh, I had left it, I had left it here ascending and descending. I see, it's sorting in here. So anyway, it's, it's easier to sort in queries in here in your sort row, so that's good. Okay, so that's all correct. I'm gonna hit save, and now query E is right again. Everything is right with the world. And then our last one is um, just the supervisor table. So I'm going to, um, I can do it two ways. I'm just gonna close this. Create in query design with my supervisor table. Now this is something that usually students uh, mess up on because I think um, uh, using this totals row can be a little bit tricky, but we need to estimate the weekly pay for each supervisor by multiplying the hourly rate by 40. Show the supervisor's first name, last name. Oh no, this isn't, oh okay. This is not the hard one. This is just one you're creating yourself. So we're not using the totals row. We're gonna 
uh, we're going to create a, uh, our own field. Okay, so we need the supervisors. First name, last name, hourly rate, and then we need one called weekly pay. So your book showed you to uh, use the Zoom box. Uh, I'm going to right click here and go to Zoom and type it in here, which it's just an easier box to be able to see in. You could also just type it right here, just stretch that out and type it all in here and that would be fine too. But I'll use the Zoom box so it's nice and big. So what we want to know is this hourly rate times 40. So um, uh, the name of the field is weekly pay. So I'm going to type weekly pay and put a colon. And when I put a colon, the computer or access understands that everything before that is just the new name of this field and everything after it is what it needs to concern itself with. And it's going to concern itself with hourly space rate, whoops, closed bracket, and if you spelled hourly rate wrong, you need to spell it wrong again, because what you're telling it is to go find the number in this field and multiply it by 40. Now, you're not multiplying H times 40 or O times 40. You're multiplying some number that's sitting in the table. So I'm going to say OK and I can close this down a little, it needs, doesn't need to be so big, and then run it. So this person makes $15 an hour, so weekly it's $6.20. Now it automatically formatted it as a currency for me because hourly rate is a currency. So if it didn't do that for you, you can go and um, use the property sheet and format it as currency, but it's already doing it, so I'm going to ignore it. But if yours doesn't do that, please, format it as currency and run it. All right, this is query file save as. I need to be careful. I just want to hit my little save icon. Save as, and this is query H. Uh, query H. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute. All right, so, um, I've skipped number A, B, C, D, E, F. I've skipped one. I thought the E was the crosstab query, so I've gotten my um, query numbers wrong here. So you please do them right. Query E is a crosstab, and I'm going to do a different. Um, I'm going to do a different video for that because it takes a little bit longer and I'm running out of space here. So go back and look for crosstab query in the next. And I also want to talk about um, statistics using the statistic row in that video. So you get two videos for this chapter. Yay!